So, welcome again, everyone. I hope you have enjoyed the two previous sessions. Uh, my name is Peter, and I have Jason with me from Singapore, and I also have Helge Langer with me as a technical anchor. Um, in, Hi, Peter. Yeah. Sorry, yes. In Singapore, we have uh, been performing a couple of different uh, uh, projects. We have a lot of things ongoing, but you have collected material from two interesting different, of, uh, different case studies. So can you tell us more about that, Jason? Yeah, Peter. So uh, as I uh, mentioned earlier, I had two very interesting uh, case study about our IP mesh network radio. So let's start and I will um, share you more about this uh, topic. Okay, so uh, the first one, just last year, we have been invited to perform a service manager uh, test on a live car racing event in China using our IP mesh network radio. So uh, CTCC, which is the China Touring Car Championship is the top most uh, motorsports brand in China. The series consists of uh, 2000 CC and 1600 CC cars. The top cool production, it's the outsourced technical production company and it's the official rental production co uh, partner covering the CT CTCC race all over China. Currently, top cool production uses a, a wireless camera system that is still based on a point-to-point -point transmitter receiver technology and has a current limitation of about 300 meters range uh, line of sight. Because of the nature of the sports, key locations are critical to cover. Examples are the pit stop area, the holding area, and even you know, the pit stop room. Top Cool realizes uh, that they need a more powerful wireless camera system as the current one will not be able to meet the demand. And this is where Broadcast Solution was invited. Broadcast Solution had worked closely with Top Cool Production in planning for the IP mesh network radios deployment. Shanghai Tianma circuit is a Formula 3 circuit consisting of around two kilometers uh, long in distance with eight left turns and six right turns. There are four turns actually, which is uh, a width of about 14 meters. During the briefing, three key locations was highlighted to us. The first one is the location of the OB trucks, very important. The second location, and very, uh, the key of interest is the pit stop area where you can see from the image, uh, there's also the pit stop room, the VIP room and the auditorium level on, on the third level. The third is the holding area where they conduct the award and ceremony, interviews and other press and media activities. During the briefing, it was told us that the requirement was to provide a high reliability wireless camera coverage on the pit stop area, the pit stop room, which are non line of sight and the holding area. For my setup, so what it is, uh, I, I, I set up three sets of uh, 4200 Silvus radio with a couple of omnidirectional antennas. So these are the handled battery pack uh, radios. One set of Makito, high vision Makito encoder decoder, which are the SRT and HCBC. And then on my settings, uh, our settings was uh, six megabits per second of high definition video with H.265 encoding SRT and uh, a target of 100 milliseconds glass to glass latency. The next step for us, for me, was uh, uh, I did a you know I, I did a spectrum scan. So using one uh, using the radios as a spectrum analyzer, they have this built-in option function. So I did a spectrum scan and uh, find the best uh, operating frequency with minimal noise and interference. So in our case, we find that the sweet spot will be the 2.18 gigahertz or you know the 2,180 megahertz of frequency of operation. So just as simple as that, we will be able to detect the surrounding frequency in that uh, car racing event. And the next and also very important part of the, the setup was the positioning of the radios. So radio one, I installed it above the OB truck. So this provide coverage mainly for the holding area. 
Radio 2 was installed above the pit stop where this provides coverage for the feed stop area and hopefully using the power of MIMO, I can be informing it will also cover the pit stop room. And then also the third camera, uh, the third radio was in the camera backpack together with the ENG camera and the uh, uh, high vision encoder. So turning on the, during a spectrum scan, uh, positioning the, the radios and then just a little, uh, just some fine tuning, and then we were able to to get the very good results. You know, with minimal time of setup, with minimal logistics, with minimal planning, with minimal equipment. Actually, in uh, in in my suitcase when I went to there and do the 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 test. So the result was very impressive. Uh, transmission covering key area that the customer specified to us. We 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 did uh, we did cover the pit stop area. The pit stop room specifically also, which are the line of sight and also the holding area. And also uh, what is good to share here is during the event, you know, the cameraman was able to run between the pit stop area and the, uh, and the holding area. Uh, and then we can see from the Silvus GUI that the radio three was connecting. For example, if it is on the pit stop area, it was connecting on radio two because of the signal strength. Um, uh, connection and then when it runs to the holding area, it will seamlessly automatically switch to uh, radio one, which is you know which is uh, the part of the Silvus radio, which is a help self-forming and self-healing mechanism, completely uh, no human intervention. So uh, I did prepare a, a short video clip of this uh, event, and uh, these are actually live footages that uh, was being covered during the the car racing. Um, Apology if some of the uh, attendees will not be able to view this on a clear video because of the nature of the web streaming, but I guarantee you guys, these are crystal clear video that uh, we have gathered during the, the car racing. So let's play the video and let's watch this. Yeah, so you see that it was being part of the opening. So uh, now we are in the pit stop area. So the cameraman and the ENG uh, camera backpack system was being utilized. Uh, during this uh, event. And then now in the pit stop room where totally there's no line of sight from our camera, from uh, from the radio. And you can see the cameraman was running between. And then this one was actually, I, I, I used my phone to take a video from the OB truck because I was really very impressed that the the cameraman was really inside the pizza area. And then this one on the one of the rooms from the that they conduct an interview. So as you can see, you know, totally non-line of sight situation that was being covered by our solution. Yeah, so they started to change the the filter of the camera. So yeah, that's it was very impressive and uh, was you know I was really surprised as well that you know how how powerful the radio performed during that event. Peter? Thank you, Jason. I think this is a classical setup. It's not very complicated, but it's also really, really easy to see the advantages of a mesh IP network. What was the reaction from the customer? Because I understand that they were also using their existing system in parallel. What, what was their reaction to what they saw? Yeah, so uh, first thing is, you know, during the test, they were really impressed of the of the system. And you know, to be to be honest with you guys, I went there to do the test and to show them the the IP mesh network radio. But you know, during the test, they see the reliability, the performance, and they said to me, "No, let's use that for tomorrow's event. Let's use that during live event." And you can see from the video, you see that uh, it was really used during the the live coverage. They were all, uh, you know, we we meet and uh, exceeded actually there all their expectations. And one thing I noticed here is the use of the spectrum analyzer. And we saw that in Botton's previous, he also was using the spectrum analyzer. I would just like to expound that and say, you, you have a spectrum analyzer in each radio. In your case, maybe we wouldn't have made much of a difference, but let's say on a large lake, you can perform simultaneous spectrum scans on all radios in the network. So you can detect if you have an area with, uh, let's say, different uh, 
types of interference and so on. But from car racing over to a case study on uh, hybrid networks, mixing cellular bonding and IP mesh uh, radios. And uh, this is something you did a couple of weeks ago. And uh, I think it's really, really interesting because it goes down to the, to the core of how to utilize the hybrid mesh network. So over to you, Jason, again. Okay, thank you, Peter. So let's continue. Let me share my screen. Yeah, so the topic is about cellular bonding technology, a hybrid approach between cellular bonding and IP mesh network radio. So let's just quickly discuss a little bit of uh, cellular bonding. So some time ago, covering live news event via traditional SNG or microwave link technologies has been uh, an expensive and logistically difficult business. So here we have on the screen is, you know, we have an example of a signal flow from the camera in the field being transmitted to the HQ using a traditional satellite uplink or microwave link. And then of course, from the HQ, it goes to your core router where it's distributed to many parts of the station, play out, MCR studio, ingest, monitoring, whatsoever. And then on the last part will be your transmitter side where you broadcast it, send uplink again to probably to another, uh, to a cable company, a DTH company, or even render it to a private or public content uh, distribution network such as Facebook and uh, YouTube. So however, with the advent of uh, cellular bonding technology, broadcasters and online video professionals can now easily and cost effectively broadcast live from any location combining uh, multiple internet connections such as you know, LAN, Wi-Fi, 3G, 4G, LTE, and soon the 5G to transmit a high quality HD or now full UHD video. The key advantage of bonded cellular system is that they are lightweight, portable, mobile, making them easier to deploy in the field. But of course, such devices rely heavily on a public network for connectivity. And in most cases, and most of the time, the challenges uh, that we face is with this uh, using a, a public network. So here we have some example of those uh, challenging locations. So first, crowded locations. So we all know that the crowded locations create enormous data traffic in public networks. So we know that that will get a very uh, low data throughput in our SIM cards connections. A second is the out of coverage uh, locations, be it on the inner part of the building, uh, very remote locations, mountainous, or from the example of Boton from, um, from, from a, a boat race. And even for uh, secured locations, such as uh, high profile uh, events with high profile personalities that they usually use uh, jammers or situation where authorities, you know, shut down the cellular uh, network. So how do we overcome such challenging locations? Let me tell, uh, let me give you one good example and a solution on how we can overcome this. So let's go back to a uh, cellular bonding encoder. So here we have a cellular bonding encoder. We know that uh, it has multiple modems, SIM cards modems for cellular connections. It, it will also have a Wi-Fi, and then last will be a LAN port. So most, by the nature, it will be a mobile. So usually the LAN ports are not always in use. So how about if we utilize that LAN port and interface it to our IP mesh network radio, which then this IP mesh network radio has a gateway to the internet. So what do we have here? So this now becomes our first mile of contribution, providing internet access to our encoder on field with poor network, cellular network coverage. And this is where I called it a hybrid approach between cellular bonding and IP mesh network radio. So let's look on the example here in uh, uh, as my example number one. So here an example is a, a typical setup how, how you do a, a setup of a cellular bonding uh, network. So you have a decoder, which is uh, on a fixed location with a fixed public IP address. And then you have the encoder, which is on the field. So in this, uh, in this picture or in this diagram, you will see that a Silvus network, uh, a Silvus radio is connected on the same network as your playout decoder. And then you have a Silvus radio, which is on the encoder and with the ENG camera. So here you can see that uh, there's a, uh, a third radio that's also uh, 
acting as a, a relay in case the, uh, there's no line of sight or there's no connection or there's no uh, there's some um, uh, uh, poor connection link between our ENG and uh, uh, 4200 uh, 4400 radios. It is also good to note here that a cellular bonding encoder has a function in their interface where you can set priorities. What do I mean? So, for example, on the in, on this encoder, I can set priorities on my LAN port to be the the first priority to send the video bit uh, stream. So, in case that my LAN port drops, and then it will fall back to my SIM card as my lower priority of connections. If I reverse my settings, meaning to say my SIM cards are in high priority, and then my LAN ports are my uh, uh, low priority, then the opposite happens. But if I set them all in the same uh, priorities, meaning the LAN ports and the SIM cards are in the high priority, then the encoder will do a load balancing and then it will distribute the load between with all available interface. So these applications are usually good for, ev uh, for events with a temporary production on site where they have access to have a, a wide internet connections on locations such as probably concerts, a stadium, a sports event, where they have a temporary production, but they have an access for, as I mentioned, a uh, public IP, IP address. Okay, so the second setup is, again, the decoder side is similar. It will be on a fixed location, but all our IP mesh network radios and the encoders are on the remote side. One key thing to note here that the radio, the IP mesh network radio has an internet gateway connected to either a 4G LTE router or a fixed uh, wired connections uh, internet. So in this case, these applications are uh, applicable for live news coverage in the field where you provide the first mile contribution using our IP mesh network radio as your first part of uh, as your first gateway of connection. And then of course, you'll be have an option to add uh, additional cameras. So this depends on your network bandwidth and also the, the video bitrate settings that you will put in your uh, in encoder. So quickly, just uh, share you some of the some of the recent POC I did. So one of them is uh, uh, just a few weeks ago in partnership with Canon. So we uh, we did a, a POC here with uh, one of our key customers. So the setups was very easy. Three sets of uh, IP mesh network radios, an encoder decoder for mobile viewpoint, and an ENG camera from Canon. So here uh, we set up the decoder and the uh, the, the radio in, in the third level where it's, it uh, serves us like a, our HQ and then the, on the middle of the image you see a cameraman with a backpack system and uh, a third radio was acting as a relay that provides link between the backpack camera system and uh, the base stations. So again, I did prepare the, a short video clip of our POC and the, uh, the video is um, what you're uh, what you're seeing right now is a it's a captured image of the video, so where you can see the the output of, from the video decoder, the interface of the mobile viewpoint where you see the connections of the LAN port and the SIM cards, and also the GUI on the lower right quadrant is the GUI of the Silvus radio, which you can see the actual um, uh, uh, traffic uh, or the data throughput that uh, the Silvus is uh, handling. So please let us watch this uh, short video that I have prepared. So you see, uh, as I mentioned, we, we did start on the third level of the building. So the cameraman went to the elevator, it goes down, and then off goes the building, walks around. So the on the lower, on your lower left, you'll see that the, one of my SIM cards actually dropped its connection, but it's still, uh, but it's still, sending its all data, uh, all its video streams to our Silvus network, the IP mesh network radio. So it's still establishing its connection. And then now back, back again are my SIM cards connection, which are still on standby and still waiting to, you know. <clears throat> yeah, so on the right, on the lower quadrant, on your right side, you'll see the, 
the real-time uh, network topology of my IP mesh network radio, where there's a camera backpack, a repeater, and a decoder. And you'll see a highlighted uh, path between the camera backpack going to a repeater and decoder. So you see on this instance that the, the repeater now is, uh, uh, is being heavily utilized and the connection between the camera backpack to the decoder is passing through our repeater. I don't know, guys, if you can read, but the, the data throughput that is passing on the syllabus is around about three, three megabits per second. So as the ENG camera guys are walking through, so it's now moving to the up outer part of the building. And yeah, so there you go. So it's just a quick look to our location. So that window there is actually where our base station is. Okay, I think that's the last part of the video. So uh, as you can see guys, uh, the synergy between the IP mesh network radio and the cellular bonding uh, SIM card connection working hand in hand in this uh, POC that we presented to our customer. Peter, uh, Peter, I, you are muted. Okay, thank you very much, Jason. Yes. This uh, shows us two diff very different use cases, but most important is that in summary, you really point out that these uh, are the two multi-tools. I think sometimes when I see them in use, it's, uh, it's only our own imagination that provides the limitation. Um, I do have a question for Helge, because now actually we have been looking at uh, today a couple of different uh, uh, cellular bonding devices. But I know we have tested thoroughly many of them, and we have ev evaluated um, down to the roots a few of them. Would you say that they are more or less uh, similar in its nature? And when in its nature, I mean then that we can use more or less any cellular bonding device to provide the same, uh, to, to augment this, the situation if we need. Would you say that is more or less similar? <clears throat> now we have seen that different devices have different strengths, but definitely you can pair all of those with servers as they are ultimately IP transport devices. So you can drive the servers to the bond to increase the robustness or throughput of your bond. Or you can also do a different setup. So what we've seen so far were mostly uh, scenarios where you use both systems in parallel. We have now been asked several times, for example, to relay data out of a stadium to the next mobile cell that is not crowded where you would then use uh, a multi-SIM IP router, or we have seen several what Jason calls first mile scenarios. For example, we have been contacted by a broadcaster. They need to do a lot in the mountains where you have uh, very weak coverage. So they were also looking for a solution to solve the first mile problem until the area where you then have coverage. So it, it's like, um, uh, it, it's often used like, <laughs> you could say like a wireless extension cable. So it is also a typical use case. Exactly. Thank you, uh, Helge, and also thank you, Jason. Again, uh, seeing, let's say a picture of a Swiss uh, multi-tool and a wireless layer to switch in the form of a layer two switch, which is wireless. I think that summarizes what we do with these uh, radios. So yes. ladies and gentlemen, it has been a pleasure to share these uh, three sessions over the day with you. And uh, please don't hesitate to get in touch with us. We'd be happy to entertain any kind of communication or answer questions or look into testing and, and proving certain functionalities. So thank you very much and goodbye from all of us. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you, bye.